Hello, over the past few years I've sometimes reviewed your sort of cinema type quads but a cheaper alternative than DJI because I, I always think there's a market for something that does a similar job to DJI, you, you know, your classic cinematography basic drone that anybody can fly and take nice pictures but at a cheaper price and I've always called those a toy grade quad and some people get upset about that because I'm calling their lovely toys toys. These are all toys, they're just more expensive, don't worry about it. Anyway, I've got a new quad today, and it's called the Ruko F11 GIM 2. And I struggle to call this a toy grade quad, because price rise um, is currently available at £399 from Amazon, which is probably about $399 anywhere else, which isn't quite in the range of what you'd expect to pay for a toy, so I'm expecting good things from it, and I will be comparing it against the, the sort of higher end stuff like your, your basic DJI um, Mini Mavic or yeah that sort of thing. Spec wise this thing's interesting because it, it talks about having it's got 4k camera of course uh, 9800 feet of range which is it's over a mile at least and I've always found these to be you know okay up to about like 500 meters and get a little bit dodgy but we'll see. It's only got a Texas gimbal but it says it's got an EIS anti-shake system on the camera. Sometimes these do work very well, I've used them before. Um, it comes with two batteries, so you get sort of, you know, max amount of flight time from it. It calls itself level six wind resistance. I thought that's interesting. What does level six wind resistance mean? And according to what I find on Google, it says it can even fly in winds ranging from 25 to 31 miles per hour, which is not something I'd want to go out in. And I think that's, that's ahead of some of the DJI drones, which are like level five wind resistance. So, it, it should do well. Anyway, let's get out of the box here before we go into um, close-up, just to see what it's all about, really. Right. In the box is this bag, and in here is a very neat carry case. Always nice to get these uh, thrown in a standard. So if I open it up, here's the quad itself. Very much on the sort of similar thing to the, the folding Mavic-type arms. So quite sizeable battery in this one is on top, there's a gimbal cover here. We'll go into proper close-up and have a, a, a better look at how the actual quad is put together. But also in the box, we have a spare battery. It describes itself as an 11.1 volt, 2500 milliamp hour LiPo, so it's a, a free S. It's got its own connection there for USB that you plug in, which means not particularly fast charging. It says about four and a half hours to charge battery, because we're charging like maybe two amps at five volts, pretty slow. Got the radio here, and this looks like, I'm just gonna take this cover off. So you've got a, a screen here, obviously you hold it here, your phone goes here. Uh, there's a charge port with an internal battery. Gimbals are both sprung center, but feel okay. You've got a couple of little rotary dials here, a couple of extra bits and pieces. You've got the normal sort of, you know, stop, come home, land, that sort of thing. That'd be interesting. A lot of the time, it's all about how good the app is on the phone to get you through these things. Okay, then in this section, we've got a bunch of accessories. These little bags, we've got a bunch of USB cables for charging. Got an extra set of propellers in this box. Quick guide and safety disclaimer. Quite a chunky manual there, but there's lots of different languages. Yeah, that's about it. So let's go into close up and let's see how the quad works before we take it out for a proper flying stuff. Right, as far as close up goes, there's not actually that much to say. I've taken off the gimbal cover there and you can see the gimbal. Um, obviously it's mechanical bit is up and down. It doesn't have the your axis, so it has to correct that with the electronic image stabilization. If we turn it this way, we have got the socket there to put um, a micro SD card in. The battery comes out by pressing these two buttons lifts up, slots back in. As far as charging the battery goes, as mentioned before, you've got this USB-C on the side. If you plug in a USB-C cable, you get the flashing lights and they start flashing as it goes up and then when they're all lit, it's done. The more interesting thing to talk about is the controller here, or the radio. What I'm gonna do is just turn it on and turn this guy on so we've got something to talk to. It does actually take a little while to connect, I have to say, about up to 40 seconds. But what you've got on this is um, some normal buttons. You've got sort of stop, that's the power on, this is return to home. On the back here, you've got take photos, take video. This is the zoom control for the camera, and this makes the gimbal go up and down. 
But you've also got some, some pretty handy stuff here. You've got distance from home, the height, your horizontal speed and your vertical speed. You've also got, of course, indications of what mode you're in, how good the signal is to the drone and that sort of thing. And the reason I mention this is it's very useful to have it here because sometimes a phone screen, although all this stuff will be said there as well, the stuff in the phone will be there, but it's quite reflective and it's much easier to see these sometimes. Anyway, now we've got that done, let's go out and uh, fly this thing. Hello, well, welcome back to the field for the first fly of 2023, where it's beautifully sunny, but quite cold. So thanks to Greg from Menace for the lovely hat, to keep me warm. We're here, of course, to give this thing a go, the, the Ruku Ruko F11. Pretty good conditions, actually. The wind is like about five miles an hour tops. Uh, it's supposed to fly in quite windy conditions, but you know, the better conditions you get, the better, and plus my fingers won't get so cold. Oh, that's pretty, pretty cold. It's about six degrees here. We're a little bit closer to the coast, so the wind gets up, it's a little bit icier. But um, yeah, I'm gonna mount this on my head and we're gonna try fly it and see what happens. Okay, so we've got the phone mount in the thing, so let's turn that guy on, power on. And power has gone. Very familiar brush motor thing there. So this is connecting, and while that's happening, we will connect the phone to the Wi-Fi port. Yeah, the connection takes quite a while. It's in GPS mode now. Let's start up the Ruko app, which is upside down. Is it gonna go the right way up? No, it's insisting that I put my phone up a certain way. Fortunately, this holder is big enough so I can keep my phone in with with my case on okay then what we do that's nicely connected we say controls let's get this it keeps giving me this demo no matter what that way I've done that I'm sure there's a way of skipping it go okay First thing, of course, calibration. So the first one is the, this one. And then we do the normal, this one. And then I think we're ready. Okay, so we've got stuff going on here. What I want to do is screen record this. Okay, we're now screen recording. So let's start recording. And we'll do the normal arm thing. And then we'll take off. Well, that's not bad so far. So we've got about 10 sats. I think one of the first things we'll do is a, a return from home, return to home test. Uh, it's a little bit slow. We've got a speed thing. A bit sideways as well. Anyway, let's give it a little, little flutish around. Ooh, well, it puts the brakes on you now about it. So how's the video look? Well, to say this has only got a two axis gimbal, it's doing pretty well, I have to say. Very smooth, I'm liking that. So let's get a return to home test. We're gonna press this button. The quad is out just up there. Going home, it says. So it's turning around to face me. Let's see how accurate it gets. It's zipping over at quite a rate. How accurate is this going to be? Well, it's just about overhead here. What's, uh, so we've got up to 20, about 20 meters it went for. It's coming on down. Doing a pretty good job. I might just have to move my bag. It looks like it might land there. Just in case. Oh. How's it doing? It's pretty good. Oh, come on. Not bad. I mean, we let it get a little bit tied up there. Now, normally I would have brought that back out of uh, RTH 
and landed it properly but I thought I'd just go see how accurate it is but we've got no damage to the props it's got a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of grass right so let's have a look and uh, see how it flies now we're still recording the only thing I will notice if I go full yaw then that's a bit slow but if the corresponding like pitch and, and roll stick is actually it's quite a lot Let's have a look and see how this camera looks. Because it's got a zoom facility on it, which is optical according to this, uh, this thing. If I look at myself, there's me. And we've got this button on the side is the gimbal. So I've just moved the gimbal down. Now what I'm going to do is try zooming in. Now, I'm not sure how much this is optical and how much is digital because it's looking pretty, pretty nasty there, I have to say. I'm sure some of it's digital, but some might be optical. Well, that's, that's something. I'll have to have a look at the, the footage properly when we get back to see what it looks like. Anyway, let's, um, I was trying to see if there's a way of making it go faster. Cancel that. There was a, um, a beginner mode which I've taken off. Turn out to the uh, track. Uh, yep, yeah, there's nothing there. Can't make it go fast. Oh well. Anyway, let's have a, a look, see how this thing looks. Get some idea sort of the range and stuff as well. We're back in this field, so because the cows are away, so I've got a bit of extra room. And oh, it's got the range in it. So let's go out towards this way. Now this thing said it will do like, well it's essentially a couple of kilometers. But it did strike me that we're still connected only via the phone. It's not like the controller connects for the video. So I don't know how, how accurate that's gonna be. So at the corner of this we've got Good signal. I think we have good signal because we've got the antennas at the back here. It's just a question of how good the video does. And right now, good video. Oh, it's stopped recording for some reason. Let's put that back on record. I think when we um, when we landed, it decided just to stop. So I'm just having to peek over the top of my glass just to see this nicely. So I'm taking it up reasonably high. We're just at 90 meters. And at this point we are at the 500 meter mark, which is pretty good going, I think. And the picture quality looks good. I cannot see any, any part of it like breaking up or Going a bit funny. So I just want to see if, if this gets like where a kilometre is, I think that's pretty good going. I, I certainly feel a bit of lag in it when I was just using a yule there, it sort of over, went slightly too far and came back. 11.5. Just checking the, um, the battery as well. It's got this green bar along there, which I guess is the battery indicator. Loads of sats. 800 meters. Getting slightly offline there. Let's move it across this way a bit. Oh, it's the, the signal is starting to get a little bit jittery now is what I'm noticing. We're at 900 meters, so still doing pretty well. Gonna aim up a little bit. <laughs> and there we go, that's a kilometer. And that is pretty, pretty nice. I'm liking what I'm seeing there in the picture. It seems pretty smooth. 
Now I'm turning around now and it does seem to be, yeah, suddenly caught up. So there's definitely a little bit of issues there. Uh, it's just a little bit jittery. It's got this handy little radar screen so you kind of know where you're going. That's quite similar to what DJI does, of course. So let's head on back. Got a little jitters again as it goes. Generally speaking though, well it depends what you're doing of course, but you probably want to be within, you know, kind of a kilometre of uh, what you want to check out and stuff. That's zipping along nicely. Still got 11.5 volts there. Still looking good on the green graph. And uh, video's a bit more stable now we're getting we're in sort of 750 meters. There certainly is a little bit of lag, which you'll be kind of used to if you're flying these sorts of things. Do I need to put my regular glasses on? Is that going to be better? Mm. Let's need to stay at the top. It's not the very fastest thing in the world. Which is why I was kind of look for sort of, is there a sport mode or something, but I can't seem to find one. Our speed is uh, 6.5 meters per second. It's quite nice that it's got the height and uh, distance stuff all here, as well as on the screen, because the screens can be a little bit... Uh, <sighs> reflective, especially with the sun coming in behind us as it is, right? We are coming in from over there somewhere. Can't see us, but we're around there somewhere. Let's get more towards the middle of the field. Oh, there I am, right at the little dot there. Come on, little dot, come on down. Move the uh, the gimbal down a little bit. Gimbal movement seems fairly smooth. It doesn't seem very proportional to what I actually do with my control. It just kind of moves. We get a little bit of your jitter as well when we stop. I do notice. Right, we, there we are. It's easier to do it line of sight at this point, I think. I say that managing to get the wrong way around. It's funny how slow the yaw is compared to everything else. I find it quite strange, but maybe that's all part of the, um, part of that's, that's the amount it can take with the electronic image stabilization. Any more than that, it's not gonna do it so well. Well, there we are. You see, we're lolling around quite a lot there, aren't we? Let's see if it just holds itself a bit better. That was me. It does, it does weird things when it wants to stop. Okay, so what have we got here? Let's, let's have a look at the interesting um, controls. We have got... Okay, so... If I go right underneath it, and I say, point of interest, nine meters, go. It goes nine meters out, turns around, and then follows me. Well, it doesn't follow me, it rotates around me. And we've got extra conditions there. We can actually make it go closer or further away by messing with our stick there, which is pretty cool. So I, I can make it sort of twirl outwards by just holding down the, the stick downwards. You should basically get, no, get closer. Oh, hold stick away, it gets further away as it rotates around me. All right, that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's stop that. And let's say, how are we doing battery? Still good, 11.1. GPS follow. So it's in GPS follow, let's find out if that's true. Well, it's 
keeping me in look. Is it going to actually move forwards at some point? Chase after me. Now, whilst this is happening, I can make it go further up and look uh, down at me. Gimbal down, yep. Aha. Of course, this is just following the GPS on my phone. I'm going to bring it down slightly. I like that while the fact this is happening, I can control the gimbal, which is quite nice, and control how high it is. I control anything else? Yeah, I can make it sort of go in different directions. I think I might have gone out of it then, or have I? Yes, I exited it. So, another one to test then is image follow. So let's bring it a little bit closer for this. Oh, well, I see, I have to draw a little box around me. Okay, well, it's watching me. Ah, there we go, that's better. It's turning. It didn't say draw box, so I was a bit confused there. It doesn't look like it's moving. It's like a tripod mode. Should it move? Let's check the instructions for that. Doing quite a good job as a tripod. not so good for follow but hey that works I, I have no complaints against it as a sort of I, I will follow you around sort of thing and how far will the gimbal look down I suppose is the other question can you have an all-the-way look because that's always interesting isn't that people like to look directly down all right well that's the gimbal as far as it will go I think so let's just move this guy forward a bit see how it looks Just about, I think. I mean, it's pretty much above me there. Let's bring it down a sec. Aha, we've got a little beep going on. Saying it wants to return. So let's bring it in. I'll land it myself rather than let it land because that way I'm going to get it more accurate. That's going to be fighting me a bit here. So that was the first battery done and I did fly the second battery but what I thought I'd do is talk you through what you get with it and what I found. First off when recording aside from the fact I've got the 4k 30 footage that's on board the drone this is what appeared in the photo library on my iPhone it's a 720p recording that is is basically the stuff that gets transmitted to your phone obviously I was doing screen recording as well to show you the the overlay but this is the actual raw footage you get that appears on your phone and it's not too bad to look at as you probably saw earlier when I used the zoom control it did zoom in as far as the phone was concerned but nothing happens on the the 4k display there now I there's nothing in the manual but when I looked at the Amazon page it clearly says 4k webcam 5k zoom camera and it talks about having an optical zoom so I'm not sure why that's missing now there was a button for the other speed modes I just hadn't checked it out properly so this is normal mode there's a slower one and a faster one however 
what I noticed when I looked back on this footage and I saw for a certain amount of um, times when I was looking through the phone is the gimbal will develop a shake um, sort of depending where it is and depending on the wind it's on quite a sort of loose spring to try and cushion it and I think that really works against it because when it's flying along and it's you know it's not caught any wind or vibrations or whatever it's pretty smooth but when it does get vibrations it is it is pretty bad like none of this footage is is at all usable because you can see the big wobble in the corner of the screen there and we're, we're not doing anything special and as said this is this is pretty light wind day on the Amazon page this thing talks about its level 6 wind resistance and to be fair I'm, I'm sure the quad will fly in it but it's just not going to give any usable footage because this is a very light wind day this is perhaps the lightest sort of winds we'd ever get at this field obviously it's a little bit windier higher up but you know it's nothing outrageous and the gimbal is unable to to hold itself steady which is a real shame because the electronic image stabilization is, is pretty nice and so is the smoothness but if there's a bit of wind on that gimbal it's the whole thing shakes about and that's no good it does capture footage in proper 4k 30 and the data rate according to my computer is about 42 megabits per second there's a few things i didn't try out as well the the photo mode is essentially the same resolution as video it, it's 4k so it's essentially doing a screen grab I also didn't try out the waypoint mission which is uh, basically you touch a bunch of points on your map and it would fly that or the hand gestures so you can do a hand gesture and it will take a photo and that sort of thing I did find out that the image follow me should just basically look at you it doesn't move so that bits working absolutely fine so in terms of things I didn't like about it aside from the fact we were getting these shakes in the footage um, I found it quite difficult to manoeuvre at slower speeds. I'll give you an example of this. I wanted to try and follow uh, Graham the Farmer's tractor here and I, I found it difficult to track it nicely with the yaw. It's like the yaw doesn't have enough proportional control on it. It's kind of like all or nothing. So I found that quite difficult. I mean that's something you'd perhaps get used to and it, it would get there in the end. Um, but the other thing is, when I'm trying to land it, I found that really quite tricky as well. I think this is a case of not enough proportional control, so it's hard to do a very small input. And with this, I'm starting to bring it down. I just want to give it a little turn and it goes way over and then it obviously corrects itself to stop. So actually bringing it down and trying to land it on my map, I found really quite difficult. Again, this is something you'd get used to and, and be able to get in the end. In terms of flight time, it advertised 28 minutes. I think I was getting around 24, 25, so that's not actually too bad. I'm obviously not doing anything hard, and I was in normal mode instead of fast mode, uh, although camera mode's even slower, so that perhaps would have lasted longer, but it didn't do too bad. I tried to film this while it was hovering, and because I, I could see this just piddling around like that, but you can see that it's very springy and I think the combination of flying along and of putting the gimbal down it just wobbles like anything. Now with all these cinema type drones the most important aspect of them is they've got to be easy to fly and they've got to take good video. Now this was easy to fly although I found it difficult to maneuver doing sort of small movements. It's almost like, as I said before, the proportional control just wasn't sensitive enough. Just moving it a little bit, you want to get that gentle acceleration. But you could see it from the video, it's like I push forward, it goes like this, and then puts the brakes on, so we're getting this thing that's sort of wallowing around a bit, which is a real shame because all the modes worked really well. GPS return home, that was pretty good. I mean, it missed the map, but only by like this much. The point of interest was nice and it is good that you could change uh, how far you're away so you can sort of corkscrew away if you want to. Follow me feature so it would follow the GPS signal of the phone is nice and even that sort of visual thing where it would basically act like a tripod but follow you around and just sort of rotate. That was fine and I, I'm sure that the waypoint stuff and the, the gesture stuff was absolutely fine as well. The problem with this guy is the price. Now if this was something like 100, 200 pounds I'd be like give it a go. I mean you've got that shaky stuff but you know you've got some good footage in there as well and you just edit around that and that would be okay. 
but it's not, it's double that price. This thing is on Amazon for £399, as I mentioned. It, it says that's a 20% discount and the normal price is £499. I take that with a pinch of salt. Sometimes it's, it's designed to look like that. So it's like, oh, look, you've got an amazing discount. We're getting it cheaper. But at £399, you're mixing it up with DJI. To put it in context, the DJI Mini 2 is £419, yet it's more expensive by £19, but that has a proper free access gimbal, it has a better camera, produces better video, has better range, only comes with one battery, but that battery outlasts those batteries. It's just a better overall quad. I haven't seen problems uh, from the Mini 2 where the gimbal's shaking around and you're getting really crappy footage. I've seen the odd wobble and wibble from DJI drones, but Generally speaking, 90% of the stuff I've seen from them is absolutely spot on. That's kind of why they're the market leader. So I can't, in good conscience, at this price, say give this one a go, because I just don't think it's worth the money when you spend just a tiny bit extra and you've got a better all-round drone. The, 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 um, the Mini 2 also comes at 249 grams, so you get rid of the, the, the extra licensing issues you have with this heavier one. I think it's about 500 or 600 grams. And that's about it really. It's um, it's reasonable. It's a real shame about that gimbal wobble, else it'd be a lot better. And I would say at like a 100, 200 pounds drone, it would be worth a punt, but not when it's so close to something so much better. You have to try that instead. Of course, if you still do want one of these, you're quite welcome to do it. And there'd be a link down below where you can get it. But really, I would say spend an extra 19 pounds and get a better DJI Mini 2. I, I'm not sponsored by DJI. I've got one DJI quad and it works pretty well. They're just, the other stuff just hasn't come up to the sort of specs they have. And when it's similar price, it needs to. Anyway, hope that review has been helpful and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.